What's going on guys? Welcome to my channel. I'm John the Video Guy and in this video tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys an easy way to create an elegant slideshow inside After Effects. Okay, so we're going to start in Adobe After Effects and we'll import our photos. So double click in the project panel, go to where your folders are located, and then import the folder by clicking open. Now you should have your photos inside After Effects and next we'll create a new composition. So go to composition, new composition, and we'll name this animated photo slideshow. Then create your composition settings. I'm going to choose something a little smaller such as HDTV 1080. Then create the length. I don't really know the length of this slideshow so I'm just going to make a minute and a half but feel free if you know how long each photo should be you can adjust this to however you wish. And then click OK. Then the next part is select all your photos and drag them into the timeline. So once you drag them in, you'll see that they're all different sizes. And what you can do to conform these photos is right click on all of them in the timeline, go to transform and fit to comp width or height, whichever works better for you. Now you'll notice they're all fit to the size of the composition. So if we go to fit here and we go through these photos, you'll see that they all fit. Nothing is ex overextended. Next, we'll make them all the length that we want. So for example, I want these photos to appear for about five seconds. So I'll go forward um, to my timeline and with them all selected, what we'll do here is just go to the five second mark and then hold down Option or Alt on a PC and bracket. And this will trim all of your layers to be f exactly five seconds long. Next, we'll add a blur effect. If you don't want to add a blur effect, feel free to skip forward. But I'm going to have these photos blur on and off as they tran transition from one another. So in the effects and presets, I'm going to type in blur. And I'm going to drag in Gaussian blur from the blur and sharpen menu. What I'll do in the effects controls timeline is I'll keyframe the blurriness. Now I'll start at blurry, so maybe I'll change it to 50. I'll go forward about half a second and change the value to zero. Then same for the end, about four and a half seconds. I'll click U on my time on my layer to bring up the keyframes, make a diamond, go to the end of the layer by hitting O, then change the value to 50 so it blurs out. So this is something that you should have. And then what you can do is copy Go to the start of the timeline here, click on the effect here, hit Command C, then paste, select all of the other layers and hit Command V. And this will paste that effect to all of your other photos so that way you have the same exact blur transition to all of your photos. Alright, so the next step is to sequence these layers to actually make them actually blend into each other and spread them out. So you can easily do this in After Effects by selecting all your layers, right click on them, go to keyframe assistance and go to sequence layers. Now it's important to realize that the order of these layers or photos do matter. The one that is on top will be the first photo in your animated slideshow. So just make sure that you are happy with the order of the photos before you do this step. Then click overlap. This will overlap your photos. So I'll choose about one second. And then transition, you'll want to choose cross dissolve front and back layers and then click OK. Now if we zoom out, you can see that we have our layers fading out over each other. What you can do is go to the end, click on the last layer, click O, click N on your keyboard to trim the composition work area, then right click on the work area and trim comp to work area. And this will basically trim your composition to be that specific length of time. Now the one thing that we'll have to do is add keyframes to the first and last photo to fade it in and fade it out. So we'll hit T on our keyboard for the first photo, click on the diamond, go out to about one second, click another diamond, then go back to the beginning, and then change that value to zero. So now it fades on. And same with the end. We'll click on the last photo in our timeline, click O, click T, 
click a diamond, go back one second, make a diamond, go to the end, and we'll click zero. That way it fades out at the end. All right, so now we have our basic animated slideshow at this point. Next, let's look at a few ways that we can stylize this. So first what we'll do is pre-compose these layers. We'll select all the photos or layers on our timeline, right click and go to pre-compose. And we'll just name these photos animated pre-comp. Something that reminds you that these are pre-composed layers that are already animated. And we'll click OK. And what we'll do first is you'll notice when we play this back, there's black edges around the photos that aren't big enough to fill the entire composition. So what we're going to do is fill that space. So a typical way that you could see this in a slideshow is they'll basically uh, blow up the photos and basically blur it and maybe even lower the opacity of it to make it a little darker. I see this in a lot of different slideshows, so this is a typical effect that other people use a lot. What I'll do is just command hit Command D on the pre-composed layer and then hit S to bring up scale and what you can do is scale this up a little bit to fill the frame. Then click T to bring up opacity then bring down the opacity to maybe I don't know, maybe 20. Then what you can do is actually add a blur to this. So add another Gaussian blur and blur it to maybe 50 or so or anything that you like. Maybe 25. That way you can see a little bit more of the detail. Another thing we can do is add a vignette to kind of stylize this a little bit more. So what you can do is go to layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll hit return on our keyboard and we can name this vignette. And then in the effects and presets menu, we can search for CC vignette. Click and drag this to the adjustment layer. And you can see we kind of added a vignette. You can adjust the controls and effects controls. You can bring this out more. You can change the view of angle to really stylize this to the way you want. You can change the center of it as well. So if there's a certain part of the photo that you want the vignette to go around. You can choose the center and relocate it. I'm going to bring up the opacity of this a little bit so we can see more of the what's underneath here. Maybe 60 would be good. There we go. All right, so next I'm going to pre-compose these once more. Select them all and then go to pre-compose. We'll name this photos animated stylized stylized pre-comp. And the next thing and last thing we'll do here is add animation. So you notice these are pretty static. So what we're going to do is basically just zoom in and out a little bit to kind of get them a little bit animated. So what we'll do first is turn this into a 3D layer by hitting the little 3D icon on the layer. And then what we'll do is go to layer new camera. Make sure it's preset is 35 millimeter and click OK. Next, what we can do is p hit P on the camera layer to bring up the position controls. We can click the time stopwatch next to the position parameter. Go out into time a little bit. So if we remember when we first animated these layers, it fades out four seconds in, and each photo is only five seconds long, and it starts fading out at the four second mark. So what I'm gonna do is animate the position specifically at the four second mark. So up in your 3D controls, I'm gonna click on the dolly towards control, and then maybe zoom in a little bit. You don't have to go too far, just a little bit here we basically have this dolly in effect happening between these two keyframes. And now what we want it to do is basically back out, possibly. That way this loops. So an easy way to do this is what you can do is on the time, on the stopwatch, we're gonna add an expression, just option click or alt click on a PC to bring up the expressions controls. And what we'll do is add a loop out expression I'll paste this into the link down below if you just want to copy and paste the expression. Otherwise, type in loop, then capital O U T, then make an open parentheses, then type in t 
type space equals space parentheses ping pong. Then comma space num capital keyframes space equals space zero and go to the end and hit a semicolon. And what this basically is telling After Effects, After Effects is that it's ping ponging the animation. So you can see as it comes to an end, it goes backwards. So it's ping ponging back and forth in between these two keyframes. You can see at eight seconds, then it goes back in again. So this is an easy way to animate this animation. That way you don't have to make several keyframes. This is an easy way to do this, especially if you have several photos. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave a comment down below if you have problems setting up this expression. I'll, I'll check out your comments and I'll see if I can help in any ways. So the last step, guys, is to export this. So if you are happy with your animation here, go to Composition, you add a render queue. If you want QuickTime, click on the loss list. I always like QuickTime. Go to Format Options. I always like the Apple ProRes format. 422 is fine. Click OK. Click OK. Next Output 2, click on the name. Choose where you want to save it. Click Save and then click the Render button. Now say if you want an H.264 file or an MP4 file, what you can do is open up Adobe Media Encoder here. And this third, this third party or other application will open and this will allow you to export it at a more compressed, finalized video. If you guys want to just, you know, upload it to YouTube, this is a good option. Go back into After Effects and then click on Q and AME. And what this will do is basically kick this over here. And these presets are fine, H H.264, high bitrate. The output file should be still in your downloads folder or wherever you chose to save it, and then click the play button in the top right. This will export out your slideshow. So that's it for this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Now the next step is if you want to take this slideshow, maybe add some background music to it. I did make a video going over some of my favorite royalty-free options when it comes to copyright-free, royalty-free background music. So I'll leave a link to that video up here. Feel free to go watch it out. It's some nice options if you're looking for some nice uh, music tracks to add into your videos, especially if you don't want to, you know, the video to get copyright stricken. So feel free to go watch it if you guys are interested. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.